This video will examine the advantages of raising grass-fed meat as opposed to grain-fed meat. Not only is grass-fed meat a healthier choice for human consumption, but also for the earth because it results in a significant conservation of fossil fuels. Natural gas or oil is used to produce chemical fertilizers and pesticides, which are used in great quantities on corn crops, which are in turn used to feed grain-fed animals. One commercial grain-fed cow requires 284 gallons of oil from birth to slaughtering. Raising grass-fed animals requires a great deal fewer resources than do grain-fed animals. Grass-fed meat requires 60% less energy resources and 8% less land resources than does grain-fed meat. In addition, trucking feed and fertilizer all over the country wastes a great deal of fossil fuels. A shocking 31% of the energy used for agriculture is used for the manufacturing of inorganic fertilizers. Grass-fed meat production, which uses natural fertilizer or manure, eliminates this use of energy. It is our hope that after seeing this video, you will think twice before buying grain-fed meat. We started at the Bryn Mawr Farmer's Market, where we met up with Jen Kleeman. She and her husband, Wayne, are the owners and operators of Cantor Hill Farm in Malvern, Pennsylvania. In addition to growing organic produce, Cantor Hill Farm is dedicated to raising grass-fed animals without the use of growth hormones, antibiotics, or chemicals. Cantor Hill Farm's website says it best. We founded the farm on a simple premise. Before chemicals, labs, and factory farms got involved, God had created a perfect workable system. We will learn about it, respect it, and we will naturally and successfully be able to be beyond organic in our food supply. We started in 2008, we bought the farm, and we, um, we started raising our own animals actually because I started reading a lot about what was in food. In particular, we have a teenager who just turned 15. And when I read and understood what was in, particularly hormones and the chemicals that were in food and how it was affecting teenagers, we decided to raise our own food. Um, and we had absolutely no intention of raising food for anybody else. <laughs> but once we started doing it, um, we raised chickens, we had eggs, we started kind of, we added some sheep. Um, the sheep were actually lawnmowers originally because it was just too much work to be able to do it ourselves. And people kept coming, you know, friends and stuff that we would give meat to came back and said, we shared it and people want more. Um, and they love the fact that they got to see the animals. Sometimes not everybody loves that aspect of it, but they get to see the animals and how they're raised. So that's how we got into it. Originally, we said, well, okay, if this many people want it, we'll try and spend a few more hours in the morning before work and a few hours in the evening after work and, and try and offer it to more people. So both of us work full time. So we farm in the morning and the evening um, outside of our regular jobs. In terms of the grass-fed aspect, really it's the, it's the medical thing. It's understanding that that's what they were designed to eat. Um, it's, food is lower in saturated fat, it's higher in the nutritional value, and you have much, much healthier animals. You don't have to use chemicals to try and deworm them. You don't have to try and use antibiotics. They just don't get sick as much because it's what their system was designed to eat. It's the same thing as when we're eating stuff that's healthy for us. You just have naturally have more energy. You don't feel weighted down, and you don't have all the different complications that are caused by certain other fast foods and things like that. <laughs> so it's very comparable. Two different farms that we studied, and one was in Ireland, and then one is here in West Virginia. And the one that everybody knows here is Polyface Farm, which is Joel Salatin, and he's the one in, in Food Inc. Um, and so we went to see how they were raising things, and in particular how they were handling some of the things like predator problems and um, getting the animals, in particular meat birds. They um, they're very lazy, and so we were raising them, and we were letting them out each day, just you know, go out in the morning, and then they would take a couple steps and they would flop down. And so we said, how do you actually get them onto fresh grass each day so that we know that they're healthy and we know that they're eating it? So we went down to see what it was that they were doing, and we literally mirror the, the pasture pens that they do. So we put our, our meat birds into 12 by 14 foot pens, and we move them. Initially, we move them once a day, and after they're about six weeks old, eight weeks old, they eat a lot. And so we're moving them in the morning and in the evening so that they're constantly right on top of fresh grass. And it's, they get used to it. We get down there, we bang on the back of it, and they all walk to the front of the pen and then just walk with us as we move it. And they just, you know, right onto the new stuff underfoot. And actually, we found that it does great things for the grass. If you just leave them there for one day, it's a perfect fertilizer for the grass so we don't use any fertilizer. There's definitely a sensitivity, too, to, to grain and what else might be in grain. You know, just what kind of, what kind of chemicals and medicines people put into it. 
Um, and then as soon as you get grain involved, it's just a whole, it's a whole different way to raise. Um, and we just, we don't get involved in that. Now everything, when you do grass fed, one of the downsides is everything takes longer. It's just like if you and I ate salad and we were trying to gain weight, you know, we just, it would take a long time. <laughs> and you have to eat a lot of it. And we do heritage breed birds, so they take a long time. So they do spend a lot of time on the grass. So it's uh, 14 to 16 weeks, as opposed to the commercial uh, chicken that most people have, the Cornish Rock Cross, is about a seven week um, to process. It's a trade off, but it's one that we're happy to make. Over something because I can't see too good, but All right. <laughs> okay. I, I feel my way around because I've been walking around here since 1943. <laughs> Meet Leo Tig. He is 92 years old and has been working at the same family farm in Westchester, Pennsylvania since 1943. Leo is what can be referred to as a hybrid farmer. He feeds his cows a combination of grass and commercial grain feed. His cows do spend quite a bit of time on grass, which is good. Leo is opposed to growth hormones and only turns to antibiotics when absolutely necessary. He never uses antibiotics as a prophylactic measure. Leo's type of farming is a step in the right direction. He uses fewer natural resources than fully committed commercial farms, where they never even step foot on grass. But his methods still require more fossil fuel use than farms that are fully committed to raising 100% grass-fed animals. You are about to see Leo feed his two bulls a commercial grain feed called Allstock. Oh, come on here. Hey. Come on here. Hey. Hey. Sometimes they know what that, that, that feed. Oh, here they come. Come on here. Why don't you use hormones on these cows? Well, uh, uh, it, 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 it's, it's medicine, and you know, and, 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 you, and it's, they, they find it. it, it, it I don't, you know, the, 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 you shouldn't shouldn't do that to, to your your food. Your, you know, the, because some people might be affected. I don't know. You know, it's just it's just the wrong way to do it.